Well, it can only go up from here, right? Right? would think so. Not for the Chicago Bears, though. One of the worst plays I think I've ever seen, you know, in regulation at the end of the game against the Detroit Lions where you, know, you had 20-something seconds to go and you waste all of it on a play. Or you don't call a timeout. Matt Eberflus is gone. But the Bears, they played even worse against San Francisco this past week. Um, just, to, just to get us kind of started here, I know. I missed last week, I know. Um, it happens. They, they're, last year, I took like a week or two off. You know, from talking to the NFL this year, I took a week off. I was just not feeling it last week. You know, like, it is what it is. Like, the Vikings keep winning. Detroit keeps winning. Green Bay was able to take down Miami on Thanksgiving night, but they could not beat the they couldn't beat the Lions though. I honestly, I honestly knew the Lions were going to win with a Jake Bates walk off field goal, and yeah, that's exactly what happened. The Steelers looking like one of the best teams in the NFL. They they were able to overcome that first game, that snow game against Cleveland, and beat them. You know, Cleveland. It was finally eliminated from playoff contention. You know, they had a barn burner with the Broncos, you know, last Monday night, and it was it was rough. The the Buccaneers looking like they are going to be able to get themselves back in the lead in the South, in the NFC South, you know. The Chargers, you know, pretty inconsistent to be quite honest with you, but hey, they beat the Falcons, and that's kind of where, you know, some stuff is kind of pointing to it, you know. Like, is Kirk Cousins the problem in Atlanta? I think so, because he hasn't thrown a touchdown in weeks. He's thrown nearly 10 interceptions, though, in the past four or five weeks. Um, you know, the Cowboys take a step forward. You know, they beat the Giants on Thanksgiving because, of course, they beat the Giants on Thanksgiving. You know, when you start guys like Drew Locke and Tommy DeVito, you're just not going to have a fun time, you know. Yet that press got us hurt. And yeah, Cooper Rush is in. Yeah, the defense is terrible, you know, to the point where it's just like everybody just got injured again. But then you take two steps back on Monday night against Cincinnati, a, a Cincinnati team that's desperate. They desperately needed that win. And Cincinnati, you know, was able to, you know, not make a mistake on a punt return to where the Cowboys – of course, made a Leon Lett type mistake on special teams, thus getting the Bengals the ball back, thus allowing Jamar Chase to roll on down for a touchdown and win that game for the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, it's crazy. The Chiefs' devil magic continues. They, they beat the Raiders on Black Friday. Beat the Raiders on Black Friday, beat the Chargers on Sunday night. And again, the Chargers have been pretty inconsistent. You know, can't they can't beat Mahomes. They can beat Kirk Cousins, but they can't beat Justin Herbert. Just can't beat Patrick Mahomes. I just don't understand it. Now we're kind of asking, you know, also who's going to take the the NFC West? Well, I don't know if it's the Cardinals anymore, guys. You know, they got pimp slapped by the Seahawks this time, you know. I mean, Seahawks are just better in every facet, you know, of the game. Now they you know, Seattle's got a big game Sunday night against Green Bay, uh, which should be huge. Geno Smith, Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, you know, Zach Charbonnet, you know, is now being used as the receiving threat. You know, Josh Jacobs on the other side with Jordan Love at QB. You know, I mean, it's just it's just been great, you know, to watch the Seattle team, you know, thought, you know, at one point, you know, that Seattle was just going to be kind of inconsistent. But now they've reeled off a couple wins in a row. They're really making things a lot more interesting. Same thing with the L.A. Rams, with Puka Nakua and, and Cooper Cup at the helm, you know, now leading that wide receiver core again for the Rams. You know, now things are cooking. You beat the Saints. You know, the Rams beat the Saints, and then they outlast the Bills, which is crazy because the Bills just beat San Francisco like they stole something. But then again, San Francisco beat the brakes off of Chicago like they stole something. And that, and I don't know what's with some of these games, like the Bills-Rams game and the Broncos 
Browns game was just crazy. Like, why are these scores the way they are? You know, it's just crazy. You know, like I said, there's a lot of storylines just kind of, you know, marinating in there. Marinate did that sees there. And tomorrow night, you know, the 49ers try to get the 500. Brock Purdy was out for a week, you know, came back after, you know, the Bills got, you know, Bills got finished blasting that, that 49ers defense. And, I mean, this is a porous 49ers defense. You know, Fred Warner's been playing hurt. You know, Bosa's been kind of iffy, you know, at times. You know, he even had to be out for, you know, that week the Bills came and, came and played, you know, San Fran. It's it's going to be interesting tomorrow night. Uh, Commanders, pretty close to locking up a playoff spot. Yeah, it's against the Saints, who've lost Derek Carr for basically the rest of the year. Uh you know, at this point, if Derek Carr even comes back for like the last couple weeks of the season, it's just not even worth it. You know, Chiefs Browns. I mean, the Chiefs have already clinched the AFC West. They've clinched it Sunday night, you know, against the LA Chargers. Um, Bengals again trying to get back into the playoff race. If they beat the Titans, they are firmly in the thick of it. Same thing with the Dolphins. If they beat the Texans, who've been kind of middling, you know. It'd be kind of middling, but Nico Collins is still one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, you know. Um, and again, some of these Sunday games have just been awful lately. There's just been some awful Sunday slates, you know, lately in the early windows especially. But this week, it should be a lot better. It's a lot better, to be quite honest with you. But this early window kind of stinks, you know. Dolphins, Texans being really the only game that matters here. You know, Ravens, Giants, you know, Ravens trying to, Bounce back after they lost to you know the Eagles. You know they were able to able to take a bye week and you know just kind of just kind of rest up a little bit. You know Jets Jags. It's honestly it's over for Aaron Rodgers and company at this point. The Jags are terrible. The Jets are bad. It's rough. The Cowboys, Panthers, same thing. The Cowboys are injured to hell and back. Bryce Young, you know, although he's having a little bit of a renaissance in a way, it's still the Carolina Panthers. But, man, I'm telling you, that 325 slate is just loaded. It's a double double header week, you know, so we have five games in that late window in week 15. You know, Bucks, Chargers, you know, a lot of people are not going to be watching this game, you know, because it's not available where they are unless you have red zone. You know, Colts, Broncos, that's going to be key. Can the Colts kind of wiggle their way back into things? Can they get the 500 against the Bo Nix and the Broncos? See about that. Um, if the Cardinals can do something, you know, against the Patriots, that's, that, that would be nice. You know, they can make the West a little bit more interesting because, again, Rams, 49ers is, you know, on Thursday night, and that should kind of help kind of figure some things out. You know, if the Rams win, they'll be, you know, 8-6. and six. You know, 49ers will be 6-8. and eight. So the Cardinals got to fight their way. They got to fight their way back into it. And, again, the NFC West is really one of the key races to watch as we continue down the stretch the NFL season. Bills, Lions, oh, my God. Josh Allen, Jared Goff, my God. The wide receivers have been playing pretty, pretty good, you know, for for the for the Bills, you know, Hollins and, and and everybody else. I mean, it's just it's just wow. You know, the transformation of this Bills team. Yeah, Josh Allen had six touchdowns against the Ram. I mean, he's Josh Allen. He's one of the best players in the league. The Lions, two headed monster in the backfield, Amon Ross St. Brown at wide receiver, reported tight end. Yeah, this Lions team has been devastated you know, by injuries on the defensive side of the football, but they just find ways to win and win consistently, you know. Steelers, Eagles, same kind of game, just big. Saquon Barkley, could he get over 2,000 yards this year? I think so. I think so. I really think so. Steelers, you know, a really solid team. You know, when they're cooking, they are cooking. George Pickens was out last week, but, hey, the Steelers was still able to, you know, take care of business, you know, with other guys on that field. And, I mean, big-time game, huge game. 
Seahawks Packers again, huge game, like I already said, and then the Monday night games and the Monday night games. Honestly, the Vikings have basically clinched the playoff spot. And same thing with the Packers. You know, if they beat Seattle, I think Packers have clinched. Vikings, they technically should have clinched by now, but you know, there was some wonky stuff because of you know the games they played with Arizona and LA. But they should clinch this week if if they beat the Bears. And the Falcons, they just got to rebound somehow. They got to rebound somehow. The Raven, not the Ravens, the Raiders. The Raiders are a good team to bounce back against because, you know, they're, they're, their QB situation is terrible too. Like, it, it's it's bad. It's bad for the Raiders, man. It's bad, you know. Really, really bad. So, yeah, only four teams have technically clinched the playoff spot as of this moment, you know. Just four. I know. You know, the Bills, the Chiefs have clinched on the AFC side. And then, you know, for the NFC, the Eagles, the Lions have clinched. But honestly, the, the, the race for the playoffs is really, you know, just coming down to, you know, the NFC. You know, really, it's going to be about, you know, what in the world's going to happen with that, you know, last maybe two spots? Because I think the Vikings have that, that that third one locked up. It's like the NFC South is going to come down to the Bucks, the Falcons, and maybe even the Saints. You know, the Saints are five and eight, but the Buccaneers are steadily grading ground, winning their last three games. You know, so really it, it's going to come down to is there going to be a second NFC West team? Is there going to be another NFC South team, you know, in there? Or what about the Commanders? And the AFC, honestly, we are getting closer and closer to being six. Again, the Bills won the, the AFC East. They won the AFC East already. You know, Chargers and Broncos, you know, are going to be, you know, fighting it out. Same thing with the Steelers and the Ravens. But again, it all comes down to can the Colts, can the Dolphins, can they catch up? Can those two teams catch up and kind of put some pressure on the Chargers and the Broncos? Because really those are the only two teams that I feel, you know, maybe even the Ravens. But again, you know, there, there are the AFC West, you know, aside for the Chiefs. Who's not scare anybody? I don't think, I don't think you know, the, I don't think anybody in the AFC West scares anybody that much, you know. The yeah, Steelers should be able to lock up a playoff spot if they beat the Eagles, honestly. And then the South, if the Texans can pull away, you know, the pull if they can pull away from the Colts, then you know, get a three game, you know, advantage on them because they already swept them. Get a three game advantage, you know. There you go. So again, the NFL continues to just amaze and how stupid it has been. There have been you know, like there's going to be a game in Munich, Germany next year, I think, which is insane. The Netflix roster, do we really need 22 people for two games on Netflix? I don't think so. I think I think maybe like five to ten is enough. Well, actually, yeah, like ten, ten people is enough, but like 22, that, that's how many people you need for a Netflix presentation of the NFL. So remember the last time Netflix streamed something, it, it was just a couple weeks ago. You know, that, that fight that shall not be named. Yeah. It was glitching and buffering all over the place. Whew. I mean, you have old you have old man Belichick coming out of retirement. You know, you know how crazy that is? Coming out of retirement. But I'll talk about him going to North Carolina later, you know. And everything like that. So I'm going to get on up out of here and I'm going to let y'all enjoy the rest of y'all's Wednesday night. Take care, everybody.